Good day, my name is Sia Pambili. Welcome to Council Matters, where I bring you the highlights of the City of Bulawayo Full Council meeting. In our first update, we cover the future Water Supplies and Water Action Committee report. Under item 3, concerning alternative water sources, it was reported that the city had installed 23 water kiosks in the community and 22 within institutions. Two water kiosks in Emakandani and Pelandaba were also disinfected and commissioned for use. Commenting on this report during the council meeting, Ward 25 Councillor Alec Endavu commended the local authority for promoting hygiene by disinfecting water tanks used in kiosks. There's a lot of uh, uh, potable water that is being uh, taken from the reservoirs into the, 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 what you call this, the kiosks, the water kiosks. So there's need to make sure that the conveyance pipes and the tanks that contain that water and the tanks themselves. We make sure that we maintain a high level of uh, hygiene. On the same topic, Ward 18 Councillor Felix Mazzana raised concerns about the increase in vandalism of the water kiosks. He noted that three Jojo tanks and solar panels for water kiosks in his ward were destroyed. We as the City Council, uh, considering that we are now uh, moving towards the, 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 um, uh, the most dry part of, of the year, which is August, up to maybe the time when we are going to get uh, our first rainfall. Uh, it might be prudent that we consider uh, also uh, uh, putting some kind, I don't know what kind of security that we can put on these water kiosks so that we don't continue using them. In response, the chairperson of the Future Water Supplies and Water Action Committee, Ward 10 Councillor Kalazani and Lavu, emphasized that water committees, residents and their councillors are responsible for protecting water kiosks to prevent vandalism. Sia kutaza uguti ama water committees ukansela weskaba leza kamizi jigelele. Lisale pans libe lenjela yoku protecta i property isinge yen. Moving on to our second update, under the report from the Health, Housing and Education Committee, under item 1, Ward 22 Councillor Melimoyo noted that there had been no improvement in the cleaning of the city. He provided several recommendations during the council meeting. The traffic owners who are in the CBD, which is number two, because if there is a, a congestion of traffic a city, for example, go to Joshua and Gom Street, uh, vendors, they come where there's, there's, a, a, there's a, a business. Many say if the serious activity, the environment in Isala is Number three, I want you to interrogate on the capacity of the workers which we are having in terms of law enfo uh, enforcement. Bakwa nile ina ma police eslao, bakwa nile ina staff eslao to enforce law. Uwuti veli ngati, so even nga vengo ma pini, bakwa nile in tukata for ECBT only. Additionally, under item 10 of the same report, Councillor Moyo inquired about the local authorities' plans to allocate land to residents who have been on the waiting list for the past 10 years. My question and my concern from uh, the chairperson of the, of the committee is, uh, in my own view, I found ourselves not fair as the council to not avail land to our residents, especially those who are on the waiting list. Two, I'm worried about the pace on trying to manage and cover this number. Three, my area of concern and also a, a question to what is the plan that this committee yes, in making sure that they clear that number of 140,000. In our third update, under the report from the Environmental Management Engineering Services Committee, item seven, Ward 25 Councillor Alec and Lovu raise concerns about the state of the roads in the city and how they reflect on Bulaway. There is a very sad development, uh, Your Worship, regards uh, our regional roads, which uh, transcend or traverse across the city. I'm talking about here, Leopold Takaroira, Lady Stanley, Vic Falls Road. We also have uh, Plumtree Road. These roads uh, fall under the purview or jurisdiction of the Minister of Transport. But as they come into Bulawayo, they impact on the image of uh, Bulawayo. Responding to these concerns, Acting Mayor and Ward 8 Councillor Edwin Endavu highlighted the need for residents to pay rates to ensure 
adequate service delivery. He urged councillors to remind residents in their wards to pay their bills on time. This also encourages residents to pay rent. As long as residents are not paying, whatever plans we have will come to zero, come to naught. Because we can't really see what is the thing in mind. As much as the service delivery would improve, this also encourage our residents to also pay. A member of the Environmental Management and Engineering Services Committee Councillor Ntando Nendovu of Ward 28 highlighted on the various road rehabilitation projects which had been done in the city. Councillor Ndo is a member of this committee. I don't know what he is talking about because he could have raised these issues within the committee. But let me ask them to say if we were a different town, we would be, as a committee, cutting ribbons every week. I mean, we have done Matipeni Road, we have done Vebe Road, we have done Bay Street, we have done 8th Avenue, we have done Leeds Street, and now we are doing. This brings us to the end of the highlights from the City of Bulawayo full council meeting. Let us know what you liked about today's show by leaving a comment. Don't forget to follow the City of Bulawayo on social media. Thank you for watching. 